off and went back and asked Alex if you... Oh, no, I asked Alex if I could fix the pool house. So how many times did you ask Alex? Twice. Twice. You asked, you said you asked him once in your witness statement. I'm pretty sure I said two times. So I can read it to you? <laughs> Anyways, keep going. Okay. So in your witness statement, you said you asked him once. Okay. Also, you said that um, when you saw the murder by monoxide, it said that the husband hit. You said that the husband hit the wife over the head, dragged her into the car, and made it look like a suicide. Right? That's what you just said. Objection. You need the witness. Okay. So. But in your witness statement, you said that it was just a suicide in the car. There was no um, there was trauma to the head. There was no suicide in the car. Right, but there was no trauma to the head, right? So this well, is what you said in your witness statement. Yeah, but my witness statement was really broad. I never specified that well, there wasn't a blood trauma to the head, right? No, well, your witness statement didn't, but so now you're adding details that you didn't say before. No, I, just, in I just felt that those two stories would have paralleled perfectly. They, if you add in that extra detail, they fail yeah. perfectly. So if you add this extra detail But then again, how are you supposed to kill a person? Do you just strangle him and knock him unconscious in the car, or just like take, duct tape him to a chair and then murder him? Well, well, okay. Well, well, okay. The problem, <laughs> I feel like the um, the prosecution is trying to draw a parallel between the script and the death when it's not quite as parallel as you would, the prosecution would like it to be. Okay, I guess we could make that okay. statement. Okay. So you're basing, you've, you've made a lot of assumptions. Well, yeah, because as a detective, my job is to find evidence. Right. And all the evidence that I collected felt like it was enough evidence. Based off assumptions. So it would be more like a theory. Well, the assumptions than... have concrete details to back it up, because as an essay, you do realize you need support for your claims, right? And I felt that I had enough support in my claims. Did you ever think that the reason for the bump on the head could have been another, anything else except the story? It was a square looking bump, I think, if I recall. I'm not, I'm not sure, but... Um, you just say it was a large bruise. Okay, a large bruise in the head. And I guess it could be other things, it could be, but um, uh, I guess the doctor will get to that later. But. I don't, I don't think I have enough rights to so that's another specify. Okay. okay, another assumption. Okay. <laughs> well, <the doctor laughs> okay. Um, do you find it unlikely that Jet, for the, re the reason that Jet had the swollen lips, was because she fell in the bathroom floor, do you find that story to be unlikely? Do you have any reason to believe that she didn't fall in the floor? I have. I have she could have fallen on the floor, but as a detective, I've been in, been a detective for nine years now, as a total, and I've had many experiences prior to. So, I, I mean, it could have been, but as a detective, and as my experience, I would, I would take the claim that it was. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Another assumption okay. um, is that <laughs> uh, Alex said that you could search the storage room. When in his statement he says, it's fine to switch my place, but I have not got a key for the storage room. You'll need to add, get that from Jess. He does not say that's part of his residence. And yet you assumed that you could search that as well. Because it was connected. So I felt But by stating that he didn't have a key for it, do you have a key to your house? I mean... I have a key to my house. Yeah. Right. So don't you think that he would have a key to something that belonged to him? I guess you could say that, but if it was really that important to him, Jess, she might have decided to lock both doors, right? In her statement, she told you only to go into the house and into the garage. But furthermore, she told, she never specified what I couldn't search. Right. So you <coughs> said that you have nine years of experience, yes. right? So with you have a lot of experience with the justice system, right? Mm -hmm. So wouldn't you want to, just to clarify this, go and get a search warrant to clarify what was appropriate and what was not appropriate? As... As from her casual attitude, this is, this is, because she never specified what I couldn't search. If she really felt like there was some privacy in other places, I felt that she would have told me. The defendant stated she showed you where she could go very clearly. She, 
her hand motion was really proud if you look at my witness statement. There was a casual statement. She was, she never specified not to search anything. So if she really felt that I couldn't search something, she would have specified it. And then I would have gotten a search warrant. 